human interface as the final piece of the puzzle. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Professor. And I want to first thank everyone who's in attendance, either here virtually or in person. And furthermore, I'd like to thank Professor Sturgio, Polter, Schutte, and Wersner for sharing their expertise and wisdom on these topics. My name is Jay Shah. I'm a practicing cardiologist and medical director of thoracic aortic diseases at the Mayo Clinic and the chief medical officer for Actia, which is a Swiss company that makes a wrist-worn continual cuffless blood pressure monitor with a vision to change the way in which we deliver care for hypertension. So prior to practicing at a complex and structured organization like Mayo Clinic, I started and built a, my own cardiology practice. And practicing medicine in multiple settings has proven to me that healthcare systems are largely designed for management of diseases that are already manifest. The structure and cadence of interactions between patients and providers is reactive. Treatments by design and somewhat by necessity are relatively similar across individuals. Care is centered around us, around our time, availability, geographic location, and generally directed by the provider and received by the patient. Payment is still largely based on the volume of patients seen. And these factors create inherent barriers to achieving optimal results in chronic, common, but relatively silent diseases such as hypertension. So how can we, as leaders of healthcare organizations around the world, reframe our approach to achieve excellent results and expand our capacity. So there are 1.4 billion people with hypertension around the world and the WHO estimates that there's a global shortage of 4.3 million healthcare providers. So clearly an opportunity for a technologically enabled solution is, is apparent. Over the last 20 years, technology has transformed medical records, imaging, data gathering, our ability to reach and interact with patients beyond the walls of our clinics has never been greater. 85% of Americans, 70% of Europeans, and 66% of Chinese own at, least, own at least one smartphone. So perhaps for the question for our generation of healthcare providers is, how do we adapt technology to improve and expand our capacity to deliver healthcare? And maybe we must face the difficult truth that it is no longer enough to care for patients one at a time. Maybe our duty to help improve the health of people requires us to use technology to amplify our impact. Now, most of us took some version of the Hippocratic Oath and we swore to prevent disease wherever we can because prevention is preferable to a cure. So I ask myself and I ask all of you, how can we best do this in 2022, two millennia after Hippocrates wrote that first version of the oath? He also wrote that there is art to medicine as well as science and that warmth, sympathy and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist drug. So only by leading the development of digital solutions can we infuse our art into the technological solution. And it's also the most likely way that we'll actually enjoy the use of technology in our own practice. So my first point is that physicians must play a significant role in the development, design, and implementation of digital health solutions for hypertension. By doing so, we can co-create solutions that optimize for both patients and providers. Here's a good example. Epic is the dominant electronic medical record in the United States. And on the vital signs page, this is straight out of one of my charts, there are 22 possible navigation tabs that look like an Excel spreadsheet that contain not only the blood pressure, but numerous other variables, most of which are irrelevant for each patient. It's highly manual, cumbersome, and user unfriendly. And all the data that is entered is acted upon by us in an episodic, office space and reactive fashion. And most importantly, it is neither scalable nor efficient. So why can't my vital sign tab in the EHR look something like this? On the right is a real world example of a user's continual blood pressure data from, Act, uh, from Actia over five months. On the left is a snapshot of Actia's healthcare dashboard where the data from a user's device is automatically uploaded and displayed to providers. And using this, we can easily see and distinguish white coat and masked hypertension, establish daytime and nighttime averages, and quantify, for the first time, time and target range. This display of Actia's data creates opportunities for intervention in a continual, patient-centered and proactive way. And perhaps most importantly, it is eminently scalable and paves the way for management of many more patients per individual provider or clinic. 
So my second point is that continual cuffless blood pressure systems enable a change in healthcare management from reactive to proactive and allow for scalable solutions for hypertension care. Now, will that be enough to help solve the hypertension care for millions? I don't think so. Providers are increasingly overburdened with patients and administrative tasks, and it'll never be enough to just throw some devices and a dashboard at them. The de technology alone will not solve the problems in what is inherently a highly human endeavor, but it can make it easier. And it can do so by workflow optimization, which is to say that how do humans in healthcare organizations who are responsible for patients act upon that data that comes from a solution like Actia? Care plans account for local aspects, such as formularies, best practice patterns, and incorporate decision support tools to standardize therapy, which will improve efficiency for patients and providers. And to do that effectively, integration into the EHR is a key step. And digital integration, if done well, is the method to seamlessly display the data into an existing EHR framework. But probably most important, and perhaps most difficult, is a true reimagining of care delivery for hypertension. This is not really a novel concept, though relatively new. In this recent circulation article, the authors propose a dramatic shift in the mindset of del care delivery for hypertension, one that is directed by, but not delivered by, physicians. And I believe this approach may be one of the most likely ways to enable us to disseminate our knowledge and expertise to many more patients. However, one critical piece is missing from their article, and that's the tool by which blood pressure data is gathered from patients. So I see Actia really not just as another blood pressure monitor, but as the portal through which data is transferred from patients to healthcare organizations and through which we can reach out to them and have influence over patient behaviors outside the confines of our office. And not just in the 15 to 20 minutes that we get to see them, but 24 seven, 365. It includes patient empowerment in addition to monitoring of their blood pressure, such as diet, exercise, and edu uh, hypertension education and coaching as well as interactive tools to increase adherence and li to lifestyle and medications. You know, all the ideas that are so difficult to cover in the short time of our office visits can be delivered to the patients via their smartphones in a digestible way over the long term, which has a greater chance of creating behavior change. If Actia is paired with thoughtful workflow optimization, this should improve the efficiency and throughput of a traditional practice with better patient and provider satisfaction. And certainly there is a clear opportunity to broaden the reach of our care to those with poorer access. Given the ever expanding presence of mobile devices in our world, we can start to think about how to bring education, information and care to those who need it the most and who are at the highest risk of hypertension related diseases. And finally, if Actia is paired with a really reimagined care delivery model, the scope and breadth of the impact could be transformative. Now, if you're not sure really what that model might look like for you, well, I'm not either, but come help us build it. We're always looking for forward-thinking partners with whom to collaborate and to develop our vision. As we journey down this path, we may find ourselves needing to redefine foundational concepts. If we have a more representative set, set of data for blood pressure, perhaps a static threshold for hypertension no longer makes sense. So what defines hypertension? What defines control? Possibly such a metric, uh, such as time and target range, as it is more representative of risk, similar to how we measure diabetes now. And we are already able to, and we are already able to demonstrate complex clustering of patients into a number of different phenotypes with blood pressure patterns. We'll really need to understand and study them, but perhaps they might lead to a more personalized care plan, predict risk, and response to therapies such as renal denervation or novel medications. So now there are admittedly many steps between where we are now with Actia and where we want to go. But in that journey, we must have a North Star to guide us. And for our team at Actia, it is to find a way to improve hypertension management for 100 million people. We see a clear path to empowering patients with their own blood pressure data and the physicians who care for them. And therefore, it follows that entire healthcare organizations should be able to manage their population of hypertensive patients more efficiently and hopefully with better outcomes. And what about payers or employers who are financially responsible for large subsets of people, not just those who seek care? And finally, is it possible one day 
to achieve hypertension management on the scale of an entire country? Is this ambitious? Very. Is it difficult? Of course. Is it impossible? Only if we choose to think so. Thank you very much. I'm happy to entertain any questions, and these are my next thoughts.